Hey, how are y'all today? So, while I've been waiting for the last of my wire to build a bigger one, I thought, well, you know, I got enough to build my first multiple transistor setup with what I had here. So I thought, why not? And then I'll, you know, familiarize myself. Why, why try to build a, a 10 transistor when all I've ever done is one? Why not do a two first and see what happens? So I took that coil there. I stretched out uh, two strands, well three, a hundred feet. Um, the run coils are 18 AWG, and the trigger is 26 because that's what I had and uh, I lucked out getting it on the spool in a sense because I had no idea whether it was going to go on the spool and let me tell you I'm glad it did because I had no other recourse and I was out in a park my drill battery ran out so I didn't get it quite as twisted up as I would have liked to I see now you know this is the first time that I done it I see now that it does probably facilitate getting it on the coil quite nicely if you get a a good a good consistent uh, twist on that wire I noticed that both the end that I secured on a stump and the end that was in the drill ended up being more twisted a little bit than than right in the center of a hundred foot stretch when I do it again next time I'm gonna have something to support the wire throughout the middle a little bit possibly I don't know like um, it seemed like it could have been I, it would have been nice to have somebody standing there in the middle kinda of holding it so it wasn't picking up crap off the ground and, and whatever else just observing how much it was uh, latched in the middle um, that's one thing I learned from it and uh, being winter in Canada it's a little difficult too because I fortunately we got a bit of a warm break and uh, it's not really you know it's only about zero or one degree out there it's not like minus 10 anymore so uh, you know it uh, the wire doesn't get brittle because it's so cold nor do your hands and everything else I wanted to uh, and I still want to explore this this uh, Tesla s switch TS oscillator setup and I looked at that diagram many times and um, there's a couple of things about it that that sort of confuse me the biggest one being that it has um, a, uh, a 12 volt input to charge a 6 volt battery and unlike a single transistor Bedini it shows the battery configured I'm gonna say more like a parallel configuration um, that's not entirely correct because it isn't just parallel but if you look at the diagram I think you'll understand my layman explanation of parallel there as opposed to what I ended up wiring here I believe is as close to the schoolgirl circuit as a person would get I didn't actually go by a diagram this was my first time doing a Bedini where it was like you know what I'm just gonna build this thing and if it hums it hums and then maybe my understanding at the core you know my understanding of how these things go together will improve from this at the very least maybe I'll fry some transistors we'll see but this time I just I kinda got frustrated looking at diagrams and just said you know what I'm just gonna wire this thing and I'm gonna make it work if possible and it didn't at first but then I fooled around so what I've got is I've got a typical situation where my charge battery would be considered to be in series with my um, my run battery or my source battery 
for now I'm just using these batteries these are some of the ones that I want to um, revive those are nine times or eight times eight times uh, 12 volt nine hour or nine amp hour batteries so they're in theory they're 72 amp hours a piece got a half a dozen of them put together they they actually come wired in 48 volts and it's quite a job to um, switch them over because the, the connecting wires that they supply inside for 48 volts are of no use to you I found when when I uh, go to switch them over to 12 volts so you gotta build a whole new wiring harness and when they wired them for 48 volts they used 10 gauge wire so I continued along with 10 gauge wire and it was quite tedious actually it, it takes me you know, over an hour to switch each each battery um, because I, I made all soldered connections harnesses and anyway it's all 10 gauge so I should be able to hit this with you know um, well in theory they say you can draw 34 watts for 15 minutes out of each battery so in theory you know over 200 watts per 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 cell but my hopes is that with six together I could draw say a thousand watts um, at once you know from an inverter load for example but we'll see um, they, they do they do check out they do charge up to 13 volts um, so they're they, you know they're far from dead they probably just need a bit of a conditioning and, and they should be okay but back to the circuit here um, I have my uh, charge battery is this these two leads the red and the black so they come and the red goes to the positive of the charge battery which is coming off these these two diodes both of my transistors are actually down in here on this heat sink they share a heat sink but it, they're totally isolated so there's no concerns with the collector shorting out because you know I did it properly this came out of an audio amplifier and whenever they put I forget the style of case for the 2N30 or 55 the TO style case but anyway when you find a heat sink that's for that that case um, there's no worries using one heat sink for multiple transistors if you find the proper heat sink because it, they do it all the time and uh, you know everything's isolated there's the only thing nothing touches the heat sink because it's electrically isolated with this diaphragm underneath and the portholes for the for the base and the emitter on the back side are oversized so they come out on this side and uh, I've got wire, wires it's all hardwired you can see those those uh, blue and black wires down in there the blue goes to the base and the and the blacks go to the emitters so looking at the top here starting on on the left hand side over here it goes base collector emitter for the first transistor and that's blue yellow black and then it and then it does it the same thing again for the second one so I have you know a very bare bone circuit the only thing that I'm doing wrong, so to speak, is I have no um, diode, protection diode, from emitter to base. And that is because I've never been able to get this thing to oscillate with that diode in there. And um, that's something I haven't figured out before. I talked to uh, Mag about it quite a bit. And he said, well, just go without it um, for now and, uh, you know, get it running. And um, so that's what I've done. When it comes to the, uh, the Rio, um, basically my power comes in 
which also provides me with my ground for my charge battery. So my charge battery comes in, its black ground is there. This white wire is, is comes down to here. And uh, see it's disconnected right now. But this is my source here. So these two white wires, one's got the nothing on it, that's your hot, and the other one's my ground. So my ground is coming up and it's connecting with both the emitters. Now as far, so that's typical. I think that's typical in any standard Bedini setup. And then of course my charge comes off these two diodes which is fed by the two collectors. Okay now as far as the coil and the winds on it, on the bottom here are my starts and on the top are my ends. With my starts I have my trigger wire coming over and um, it comes at the start of my trigger, comes off into here and then through here. It goes into my rheostat which is 1k and then it funnels off and goes to two 100 ohm resistors which then feed the two base wires so then those base wires connect to the uh, to the base of the transistors um, the collectors come off the transistor that's this wire here and it then becomes this yellow jumper and the same with this this wire here that's the other collector and its jumper comes around so those both feed the the output that red wire um, the two start wires are, for the runs come straight to the to the positive um, they go through the coil and they come out and they feed into the collectors of both transistors um, so that's that's it I don't have anything else all so the only thing I have are these neons across the collector and the emitter so it's just I as far as I understand it it's just a bare bones Bedini circuit it's there's nothing more to it and no modifications per se absolute bare minimum now when I case it up things are gonna change a little bit and have fuse protection um, now here's the thing okay I, I fried my ammeter last night unfortunately so I can't really show um, inputs and outputs when it when it was working I noticed that when I had my rheostat dialed all the way down it drew about 300 milliamps when I had it all the way up uh, opened her wide open it was up over an amp like probably an amp and a half I never did get to see what it was putting in the battery although it did work at charging a battery um, you know it was it was charging even when the source was reading less volts loaded then the charge battery was reading charging it was still charging so that kind of tells me that I'm getting some you know I'm getting some some spikes but I think and here's the thing like when I run it I can't disconnect my charge battery because it stops oscillating I'll just fire it up right now It's always audible too, by the way. Um, of course, if I lift my coil, a little quieter. The fact that it's sitting on this, I got a piece of paper under it just just in case there's any bare spots on my on my uh, wires or whatever. But um, you can see there, there there's good isolation because this is sitting on a 
on a metal tin and uh, you know like there's nothing there's nothing there I shouldn't have anything there I should actually that would make a good test just to go from ground to that heat sink just to see if there's any I never did do that shouldn't be but we'll see for sure if there's any voltage there at all let's see uh, This would be a ground. No, there's nothing there, so it's it's not hot at all. There's nothing, so I'm not getting anything leaking through, and I'm I'm not getting any heat. This is probably way overkill, mind you. I haven't tried to run it for three hours with it wound right out, but there's there's no heat anywhere, so I would say. I would say everything's overkill, but like I say, when I run it at an amp and a half or something, maybe that's a different story, but right now it appears that the fact I have a 2 watt Rio and 5 watt 100 ohm resistors and heat sinks and all that, it appears to be overkill for what's going on. Now unfortunately I can't show the ammeter, but um, it uh, it had three hundred milliamps, I believe, or so as a minimum, and it's in the mo it's in the audible range the entire time. But, like I say, if I disconnect this, it'll stop oscillating. But I did do it long enough to see both neons fire, so I have every reason to believe that both transistors are firing. Which was kind of my main concern. But, that's kind of it for now. That's, that's all I got. So, if uh, you got any suggestions, that'd be great, because this is my first solid state unit. And, uh, just kind of going from here, learning. I think I like the whole solid state business. It's an air core right now. Um, unless I see reason to, I probably won't add any core. My my thinking is is that the frequency will run higher, and it'll self oscillate easier as an air core. You know, with my discussions with Mag, that's sort of what I thought was the case. But that's kind of what I got going, and. Uh, Thanks for watching if you actually made it through the entire video. I'm sorry for being draggy today. Could have been a little more concise and wasted less of your time. Thanks for watching.